Hi, my name's Jonathan Nix. I'm at Aircon, and today I'm joined by Mark, Steve, Tip, and we've just finished playing Mysterium, uh, which is a bit of a strange game, I have to say. One player is the ghost and sits behind this screen here, and they're trying to communicate various things to all the other players around here by passing them various cards that have um, strange pictures that often combine various different things on. I think the idea is um, I'm some kind of ghost and there have been some people who've been killed and I'm trying to communicate who the murderer was, where the murder was done and what the weapon was that we used to do it. But for each player there's a different set. So Tim in this case was white, so this is the white one here, and I'm trying to get him to guess this guy with this location and this weapon. So you can see different um, uh, suspecting things for different people. Uh, and then I look at this thing here and first of all everyone has to guess who it was who did it. So I look here and oh, Steve has to guess the, this is kind of like a huntsman I guess because of the gun here. So I look through my selection of cards and you have, um, is it seven of them Tim? Yeah, yeah, you have seven cards and look this one's got rabbits on so maybe he, this guy likes hunting rabbits or something. So I hand Steve the rabbit card and he looks at it and he tries to figure out which one of these people the card I've given him points to and effectively you're trying to guess the players can discuss amongst themselves it's a cooperative game but he would take his colour and put it on the one that he thinks it is now obviously he could be right or could be wrong but each of the different players guess different people according to the cards that I hand out so I kind of give a card to each person uh, and then there's this uh, <laughs> a haunt phase if you like where Steve says, uh, am I right? And you kind of knock on the table to indicate whether or not you're right. There's a one knock for no and two knocks for yes. Uh, which does make it quite suspenseful, actually, I found, uh, when all the knocking was happening. Uh, but then, effectively, whoever was right progresses to the next level, and whoever was wrong goes back to the start. And then we move into round two, and I hand out the cards again. But now these people are still trying to guess their person, so if Steve was wrong, he would keep his card, and then I would give him another card to try and help him guess whatever it was. But then these people are now trying to guess the location. So as the rounds go by, the kind of players progress. Once they've correctly guessed the location, they move on to trying to guess the murder weapon, until eventually you're trying to get all the various players to have guessed all three things and get to the end. There's a nice little, uh, let me just lift this up, a clock timer thing which uh, indicates how far round you are and then at the end if you all manage to get there there's a kind of final phase where you put down all the different matching pairs so you kind of lay out each of the ones here and you have to give more cards out and basically get them to guess one of the four so only one of these four will actually be the correct um, suspect location and word weapon at the end and people will vote to see which one is the right one all right, hopefully that gives you a rough overview, at least, of how to play. Uh, what do we think? It's a difficult one, because I mean, this has been around for a few years, and I've played the Polish original version of it. So it's kind of, I think it's waned on me. I think, ultimately, it, it's a very good cooperative Dixit, and it's certainly good for new, for like new gamers, because essentially the rules are so vague, because the, the game itself is so vague, that it's fun, it's enjoyable. Uh, I think I've just played quite a lot now, and it's starting to wane, it's less fun for me now than it was two years ago, it's still a, a very slow game, and if your crew hasn't played it like it, I think you, you really enjoy it for the first few times, but you have to play it quite a lot. Okay. Steve? Yeah, I think it's very good, I think it's a very good family game, if you can get Dad to be the ghost and the kids can kind of discuss it with Mum and whatnot about what's going to happen, and then if you get it wrong you can blame the ghost. The ghost will always get blamed. If you don't succeed, it will be, why did you pass me that? And the ghost is thinking, because the ghost can't speak. That's all I had. Have you seen the trash I've got in my hand right now? Um, some of the pictures are so weird. Uh, they've got lots of different misses. He's got circular hole with flowers and rabbits and a ladder. Is he trying to get me to do something with the ladder, or the rabbits, or the fact that there's grass, or the fact that it's green, or the fact that there are holes, or anything like that? Um, I also like the fact that it kind of it's easier for the people who are slowed down. Once I've progressed through a couple of them, I take the cards out, and obviously their card can't be the one I've taken. So you have reduced guesses the longer you spend in the location, because you've guessed things wrong, or some of the cards have moved away. <coughs> I'm like Mark, um, I played it in the cafe quite a lot when we first got it, and a lot of the clientele wanted to play it over and over again, and I got burnt out. This is the first time I've played it in about uh, at least a year, and I've really enjoyed it. Okay, Tim? Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I think 
what isn't apparent from your rules explanation is that the core of the game is, at least if you're the ghost, handing a card to someone. So I handed this one to Steve when he was the hunter with the rabbits on, and then Steve's like, oh, there's rabbits, it could be the hunter. And you're like, yes. And then someone else says, oh no, the ladder could be like the rosary beads of the nun. You're like, no, what are you doing? Shut up, no. He was right. And then they convinced the first person who was on the same wavelength as you to start off with. So I think it's really fun, definitely, to play as the ghost, and it's just like a nice little light, breezy game for you to play if you're guessing as well. Okay, rating? Uh, I think seven. I wouldn't want to play all the time, but when I do, I quite enjoy it. Seven out of ten. Okay. Yeah, I agree, seven's a good number. Okay. I can see that the game's been well designed, and it's only in terms of the difficulty, getting, to, like, correctly guessing all the things, and then guessing the final stage, if you like, uh, is sort of touch and go. It is often very close. So I feel like the difficulty has been pitched well. Having said that, I really didn't enjoy it. And I think a lot of that is because it's just so vague. You know, you get given a card, there are so many different things on each card. And when you look at the suspects, it's not just a picture of a, a hunter or whatever it is. There's lots of other things on the card as well. It's like which random thing on the card I've been given matches which random thing on the card I'm trying to guess. I just found I was guessing blindly half the time. I didn't feel like there was really any strategy involved. But having said that, the other players who played it more than I have uh, did seem to do better than I have, so I can't help feeling like there must be strategy. Personally, I just think this game is not for me. I'd give it a 5 out of 10. Alright, thanks for watching. That was Mysterium.